What's up? I'm Triple Shoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be taking you through Tensor RT for Stable Diffusion Web UI. Essentially, this is going to boost your performance by about 50 to 100%, taking you to 2 or even 2.5 times the speed you had before. It's incredible. This extension was released quite literally yesterday, even though I covered it a few months back. Tensor RT is an NVIDIA specific extension, which was updated yesterday, and gives us a huge performance boost over normal stable diffusion and even stable diffusion with X formers. It's definitely worthwhile using or at least playing around with if you have an NVIDIA RTX GPU. If you have anything else that's not an NVIDIA RTX GPU, unfortunately this won't be of much use to you for the most part. Anyways, to begin you'll need Stable Diffusion Automatic 11.11 installed. Other flavors like SD Next may work with this, but it's not guaranteed. If you'd like to install Stable Diffusion Web UI, you can check this article down below from NVIDIA and follow the installation steps here. Or if you'd like a complete installation guide that takes you through everything, a little bit of troubleshooting and explains what everything else does, you'll find a brand new guide linked in the description down below, which I'd highly recommend you follow. This plugin may be a little bit unhappy with other plugins on your system. So if you experience any difficulties, create Creating a new folder with a new copy of Automatic 11.11 is a good idea. Anyways, for the most part, I'll skip over the step here as I already have it installed in a folder over here. The only thing you really need to worry about is updating your graphics card driver so it at least surpasses the driver that's mentioned here. In this case, NVIDIA 537.58. To find out, we can right click our desktop and choose NVIDIA Control Panel. This will open the NVIDIA Control Panel where we can click Help at the very top followed by System Information. After a few seconds, it'll pull up a new window telling us what our driver version is, 537.58, and the minimum is 537.58. Perfect. If it isn't up to date, simply head across to the NVIDIA website and update your graphics driver, as trusting Windows Update to update your GPU driver is not always the best, and you'll probably end up with old versions. Anyway, you'll find a link to update your NVIDIA driver in the description down below. To update your graphics card driver in the description down below, you'll find a download link to here. Simply select your version, your specific graphics card, your Windows version, in my case, Windows Windows 11, followed by a game ready driver or studio driver. If you want a more stable performance for things like photo or video editing, etc., then search followed by download and download once more. Follow through with the installer, restart your PC, and then continue with this guide. All right, with Stable Diffusion installed, everything up to date and set up, let's scroll down further and install the Tensor RT extension. Here, they show you how to install it manually. You can copy this link, open up Stable Diffusion, and paste it in on the install tab. But lucky for you, we don't need to do that as it's already updated in Stable Diffusion. It's already linked there very easily. I'll open up Stable Diffusion Web UI by simply running Web UI user. Bat. I'd highly recommend to right click this, edit and add hyphen hyphen update hyphen check to the arguments here with a space after previous arguments as such so that it'll automatically update to the latest version when you run it, allowing everything to be set up the way it needs to be for this to work properly. After a small update, if any, it'll fire up and launch. There we go. Now head across to the extensions tab at the very top, followed by available. We'll click load from to load from the list and you should immediately see Tensor RT here. Tensor RT acceleration for stable diffusion on NVIDIA RTX GPUs. You can also search for Tensor RT here, one word, and make sure you use the Tensor RT here. Hovering over it should show you in the bottom left or wherever else, or middle clicking it to open it a tab, github.com slash NVIDIA. This is what you're looking for, it's important. We'll install this version here by clicking install. You can head across to install from URL and paste in this link here, then click install, but finding it on the available tab is just a little bit faster. Do note it has a small download and unfortunately there's nothing outputted in the command window over here so we don't really know how long it's going to take or how long until it's done. It'll usually be about a minute or two depending on the speed of your line. The only place you can really see things happening is Control shift escape to open Task Manager. Over here on the Performance tab followed by Ethernet or Wi-Fi you can see some usage here being downloaded as we download and set up the requirements for NVIDIA Tensor RT. There we go. Now it's finally done installing so we can head to the Install tab, make sure that it's ticked here and click apply and restart UI. You'll see the console reloads and hopefully things work properly. If you see a bunch of errors, it definitely means that something's not too happy, which it seems like it is in my case. That's not very good. Yeah, things are not very good. Anyways, this is to be expected with brand new software, especially after huge updates. We can close this, close our stable diffusion window and restart web UI user.bat here. We can wait for it to launch and if you still get errors, as I do here, 
Simply close out of these, close out of Stable Diffusion, scroll up and delete the VN folder here. This will cause all of the packages such as PyTorch, TensorRT, etc. to be re-downloaded and replaced. Even with a new install, this may be something you need to do. Deleting this VN folder will also likely be the solution to your issues. On top of this, if you're running an older version of your NVIDIA drivers like I am, it's probably worthwhile updating it. Anyway, it needs 530 something and 540 something is out, so I'll go ahead and install reboot my PC and head back here to relaunch it, reinstall, and hopefully it'll work afterwards. All right, so now that I've updated and restarted, hopefully this time launching it to reinstall it will work properly. So I'll open it up, web UI, and see if it works properly. Hopefully it works this time after re-downloading and installing everything. And there we go, at this stage it should be working properly. We're still getting errors, but this is something that the developers and video are aware of and hopefully working on to fix. Once the Stable Diffusion window opens up, head across to Tensor RT at the very top, then click Export Default Engine here. When you do, you'll see a pop up here saying Build a Tensor RT Engine. This could take a while. Please check the progress in the terminal and this down here. Even though there was an error, at least we can continue without worrying too much about it, at least for now. If I scroll down on the console, you'll see that there were a few errors and eventually it started converting or creating this model. Scrolling all the way down to the very bottom, even though there were errors, it's still working properly, or at least hopefully. This is going to take some time to create create a model that allows us to generate images. While you can choose a preset from him, we'll get there in a little bit, it's highly recommended that you create the default model first, and then you can get to creating separate models later on. So for now, sit back, relax, and wait for this to complete. And there we go, exported successfully. Perfect. Now we've created a 1.5 pruned Onyx model that's been saved to our drive as TRT or Tensor RT model, I suppose. Anyways, they've been saved to disk. As far as I understand, for each model, you'll need to create a new engine. Anyways, now we have one for 1.5 safe tensors and we can expand the preset to see exactly what it is. Essentially, the default creates, I think it's this one here, 512 to 768 batch size 1 to 4 dynamic. These are different options and you need to choose whichever one based on what kind of images you'll be creating. If you're only exclusively creating 512 images, select 512 static. You can't change the image size later on and keep the speed improvement, but if you choose one of these with a range instead of just a set number, you can generate images anywhere between these two numbers here, or these two, etc., depending on which option you choose. Static should be a lot faster than dynamic, but we're not able to change the image size at all. Anyways, once it's done creating the default model, heading back to the information page, we'll scroll down to building Tensor RT engines. We've already built the default option here, as you can see, and eventually you can see the engines which have been previously generated in the bottom under the available Tensor RT engine profiles. So scrolling down, we should see here, if we refresh it, we now have 1.5 pruned EMA only for 512 images with a maximum of 768, batch size of 1 up to 4, and everything's optimized to be 512 by 512 with a batch size of 1 with a text length of 75. Text length is obviously not the longest, but it is something that you can change. If we change from this one to maybe a dynamic option here, you'll see advanced settings. Here we can adjust the minimum and maximum batch size as well as the optimal size where it'll be fastest at this specific number. The closer together your minimum and maximum, the faster it should be as far as I understand. We can also change the height and width to be the same with minimum, maximum, and optimal. Finally, minimum, maximum, and optimal prompt length allows us to change how many characters our prompt length will be. If you usually want to have much longer prompt lengths, you can adjust it here to have much higher numbers, up to 750 tokens. You can also force a rebuild if you're building the same model again. You can click export, wait for it to finish, and finally, you'll be able to use it. As far as I understand, you need to do this for every model that you have if you want to speed up those models. Do it for the ones you want to speed up, and that's pretty much it. If you like a model, the look of it, etc., you should come to the Tensor RT tab and export one with settings that you'll be using. Scrolling down further, we can activate it. In order to do so, head to Settings, User Interface, and add SDU Net to the list of quick settings. So, on the Settings tab at the very top, we'll scroll down and choose Show All Pages, then Control F to search. We'll search for Quick Settings, one word, and in here, we'll type in SD underscore Unit and hit Enter to add this new option. That's it, we've now set it. Now, all we need to do is, once we've made sure it's added, apply settings and restart. Then, the top area of our UI will now have a drop down for SD Unit. We can click on the refresh button to load our new engines. In the SD Unit option drop down, select the TRT 1.5 pruned EMA only engine listed in the drop down, and we can use it for that model. The 
engine name shows the stable diffusion checkpoint this engine was generated for, you should always verify the TRT engine matches your currently loaded checkpoint. When selecting the TRT unit from the dropdown, the extension will automatically choose the best tensor RT engine you have built as long as at least one engine exists that matches your output configuration settings. Cool. So now that we've set this option, we'll scroll all the way to the top, apply settings, and reload UI. Once it reloads on the text image tab, you should now see SD unit at the very top. We can leave it at automatic or we can choose 1.5 pruned EMA only. I'll choose this one. Then for the prompt, let's type in spaceman. We'll leave everything as is and click generate. Now it'll generate a spaceman image using tensor RT. There we go. An image popped out. This took 4.9 seconds apparently. I'll generate another one. This took 1.2. I assume it was loading and again 1.1 seconds. Super quick. Let's change the batch count to maybe, I don't know, five to get a good average number per image. We'll wait for this to generate five separate images and eventually when it's done, time taken six seconds. If we have a look at the console here, scroll all the way down, you can see we got around 20-ish iterations a second on average and each image took around, well, apparently less than a second to generate with 20 iterations. That is insane and these really don't look bad for 512 images with a super, super basic problem. All right, how fast is the default? Well, if we select SDUnet as none and generate these same images once more, it should now create these images without using a tensor RT unit at all. You can already see it's running quite a bit slower. When it eventually completes, it took 10 seconds. And having a look at our console, you can see that images are now generating at 11-ish iterations a second, 11 to 12. This is literally half of 20. This is a huge speed improvement, and it's really not that difficult to create a tensor RT unit for whatever model you'll be working in. This is definitely worth your time and effort. But the one thing is, is that it, as far as I understand, isn't really compatible with LoRes. So on the LoRa tab here, you can see I don't have anything installed. So I'll open up this folder and download a LoRa real quick. I've gone ahead and downloaded the Pepe Frog LoRa. This is simply from Civit AI. All we need to do is input Pepe underscore frog with the LoRa loaded and it should just work. So I'll refresh this, click this to enable it. As you can see, it's just added LoRa Pepe Frog 1 and we'll add Pepe Frog. We'll then generate maybe one image with no unit and this should work properly. There we go. There's Pepe the Frog as you'd hope. Let's enable our unit and generate. This time you'll see things are a bit unhappy, but eventually it does come out as you'd hope. So it's good to know that lore is still work. Is there a speed improvement though? I'll set the batch count to five once more, have a look at our console and keeping in mind what these were last, I'll generate and you can see that is generated super quickly. We got around 20 iterations a second. Cool. Let's disable the unit, generate once more and this time things are noticeably slower. Okay, cool. That's great to know that the speed improvement still works even even though we haven't processed our lores just yet, you can see we have 12 iterations a second. Cool. Huge speed improvement. I'll enable the unit and we'll head across to the Tensor RT tab. This time, we'll go to Tensor RT LoRa. Here, we can select a LoRa model that we'd like to use. Unfortunately, I think I need to refresh. There we go. Drop down. Oh, there's nothing there. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's restart this. So, extensions and apply and restart UI. When it restarts, unhappy again. So, we'll just skip through these. There we go, Tensor RT, Laura, and we can select Pepe Frog. I'll convert this to Tensor RT. No Onyx file found, exporting Onyx, please check the progress the terminal. And looking here, it'll hopefully start going through. Even though there were errors at the start, they don't seem to matter too much. I'm still getting the speed boost. And there are workarounds on the GitHub issues section talking about how to fix these errors. But unfortunately, that just seemed to break it a bit further for me. So at least ignoring these issues is definitely okay, as it seems to be functioning exactly as it should, even though there's a few annoying error messages we just need to click past when we're starting up the program. Definitely not a huge issue at all, but hopefully they'll be fixed sometime soon. This was only released literally yesterday. There we go. It's loading the Tensor RT engine, refitting the engine, and there we go. You can see that the LoRa is specifically tuned to this specific model and its specific optimized file, which is a little bit annoying as we'll need to recreate LoRa's for each different checkpoint that we're going to be using. Anyways, refreshing, you can see 1.5 pruned and Pepe Frog for 1.5 pruned. Perfect. There aren't options here as they are in the exporter tab over here for different models. 
So with this in mind, let's go for Spaceman. And then we added lore is Pepe Frog, followed by Pepe underscore Frog. I think it was uh, all caps. No, nope, not all caps. There we go. And generate. This time it'll load with our unit and checkpoint. It'll be a bit slower the first time around as it's loading everything from our drives. But now let's crank it up to, I don't know, five batch count as before. Generate. And let's see how much faster this is. Just remember, it was just over 20 iterations a second. So heading back, you can see it's still around 20 iterations a second, maybe a little bit faster. Anyways, creating optimized lowers is definitely something good to have, as anything that speeds up iterations and creating images is definitely a good idea to have, especially if you only really have a favorite model or two favorite models. Creating these checkpoints is definitely worthwhile, especially if it quite literally doubles your speed on RTX graphics cards. This is a huge improvement and definitely a welcome change. I'll be doing this for all of my current favorite checkpoints, as well as anything new that I get. This is definitely worth my time. Just a quick note, these models that we create from the Tensor RT tab are around 2 gigabytes each. If you're running out on hard drive space, it's definitely something to keep in mind. If we navigate across to the Stable Diffusion folder, followed by Models, then Unit TRT, you can find these around 2 gigabyte files for each of our lores and each of our optimized models. Then, if we head back, there's also Unit Onyx, and inside of here, once again, around 2 gigabyte ish files for each of these different models, checkpoints, and lores. Perfect. Just keep in mind it uses a bit more hard drive or SSD space, but the performance improvement is more than absolutely welcome and truly necessary. This is the speed that I get. It more than doubled my speed, and the only other options that I have in my stable diffusion web UI user.bat file are the auto launch to automatically open the web page when it fires up successfully, update check to keep it up to date, but you may want to remove this if you find that it becomes a bit unstable, and finally Xformers for a performance boost. That's it. This is a huge welcome change and improvement. Thank you, NVIDIA. Thank you, Stable Diffusion and Automatic 1111, as well as the community that helps build and get everything into place. This is a welcome improvement that unfortunately doesn't really carry across to AMD graphics cards and things like that. But for NVIDIA, at least, this is super great. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick guide. If you'd like a crash course on using Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 and installing it, setting it up, you'll find a link in the description down below to a brand new guide showing you everything you need to know about this and more. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you found this video useful. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!